Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Rockwood. This is their part number 593 roller latch and a 613 finish. This is what the roller latch looked like, looks like when it arrives to you. I was just resetting the bumpers. Um, this is the type of roller latch that is used when you do not have an auxiliary stop uh, applied. Therefore, this sort of roller latch, and this is obviously one removed from the packaging, does, the, does two jobs. <clears throat> it prevents the door from swinging beyond the stop area, <clears throat> and it allows you to keep the door in the closed position. So generally, an installation like this is going to feature the 593 installed on a single door, Uh, in the strike position, let's say, and the strike that would be included would be mortised to the edge of the door. And this piece of hardware would be very commonly used in an installation, again, where there is no stop. And the one that obviously comes to mind would be center hung pivots, where you've got basically concealed hardware, which does not permit the use of stops. However, the doors are single acting. So imagine in your mind's eye uh, a conference room and there is a wall of doors which are in effect either closets or they are access to uh, other facilities that are not necessarily uh, desired to be shown all the time, like perhaps a projector. Uh, or perhaps uh, some sort of food service equipment. So you could have a conference room, a pair of doors. Well, not a pair of doors. You have a bank of single doors, although this could very easily be a pair of doors as well, meaning uh, rather than install this in the strike or the standard lock position, you're going to put this up at the header, so one for each door. So you could open up your doors, display your material, or provide access, but because the hardware is concealed via the center hung pivots, uh, you need to be able to permit the door from swinging into the opening, but you need to per permit proper operation, whereas a center hung pivot, again, cannot uh, tolerate the installation of stops. Great application of why you would use this. Now, speaking of great applications, that goes hand in hand with all of the Rockwood roller stops, not only the 593, which is the angle style stop, or the big one. Um, there is a link below this video to the product brochure where you can review the different common roller latches from Rockwood. And I would suggest that you review them at least for knowledge of what's available. You basically have the 590 series, and that's going to be available with two, uh, with three typical strikes and then a double acting version of it. And those part number changes as the strike changes. So if you've got a hollow metal frame, you're going to use the 590 body, but it's really a 591 because you're going to get that 4 and 7 8 strike. That would be the typical one uh, that you'd see. Uh, the most co a very common is the 592. The 590 is incredibly common when you've got a wood door and a wood frame. The 590DA is the same, double, the same center hung application where the door is now going to swing in and out of the opening. Uh, and you need to get the door to center and keep it in that closed position. An application for the 590DA would be a master bedroom with a passageway to the master closet or perhaps uh, the lavatory, and the client wants a, uh, a door with concealed hardware mostly, center hung pivots, the door can swing in and out, but when they bring it back to closed, they want it to stay closed, and therefore the strike is custom because, as you can see in that cut sheet, the strike is going to literally permit the roller latch from engaging the door from this orientation or from this orientation, approaching it from either the interior or the exterior of what's considered the opening. Uh, and then, of course, the 593 and the 594. The 594 is incredibly common, a T-strike. Again, wood door, wood frame, very common. But when you need one that's going to incorporate a stop, you're right at the 593. Now, this is going to be available, of course, in your common finishes, your brasses, your bronze, your chromes, satin polished, uh, oil rubbed, obviously. And the 613 is indeed the oil rubbed bronze version of this. 
There is a link below this video to the document called template, which is going to give us the dimensional properties of the item itself. Overall height of the unit, four and a half indeed. They've got a width of the stop at three quarter inch, an overall width of the unit at an inch and a half. And then they've got some body dimensions in the sense of what you need to prep for the door. One and three quarter inch mortise. Yeah, I'd say that that would be certainly that would be adequate because you're going to have uh, a need to leave some room inside of there. An overall width of the body, which they give at two and pardon me, two and a half inch. That'd be adequate as well. Prepping for this is going to consist of um, hopefully a router, um, which will give you the cleanest sort of installation. It'll consist, consist really of two processes. Think of it as the body prep and then the plate prep. The body prep is going to give you the concealed portion of the hardware that needs to be mortised deep and first. Then the plate portion is generally the accommodation that's made for the hardware uh, that is exposed, which would be, you know, this exposed portion. So when you study that template, and by the way, I think the caliper is the woodworker's true best friend because you're going to want to measure this and measure it accurately and use the caliper or a tape measure obviously to transpose those values to your router when setting it up but I like a caliper because you can be far more accurate with it uh, as well <clears throat> than a tape measure. Putting the tape measure on the body of it the two and a half inch wide mortise the inch and three quarter deep mortise <clears throat> that all certainly checks out when you measure the material first, you can verify if perhaps the mortise is too great or insufficient for your application. Or you're also double checking the possibility that there's an error in the paperwork compared to what you have. Not that one is wrong, but one might be out of sync with the other or out of date. Incredibly rare to happen, but one out of 10,000 times, it's going to happen. So you always want to put the tape measure to the paperwork first. Now that body prep, when I would when I would prep for this sort of hardware, I would locate my center line of where I'm going to install this. And if it's going to be in the, in the strike jam, uh, take an audit of the other doors in your area. And make sure that this is positioned at about the same height as everything else. Because when the doors are open, you are certainly going to see you know, that, that angle. So you want everything to, to, to look like it's compatible. If it's in a pair of doors, uh, or, or, or a single door at the header, which you could easily do. The, if it's a single door, putting it down where the dummy pole will be or the edge pole or whatever it will be is a good idea because the area that you're pulling is not going to permit any twist or twist in the door before it opens when you're pulling it at the same location where the roller latch is installed. If you put it up at the header and then your dummy pole is down here, you're inherently going to get a bit of flex when opening the door up. Marginal, of course, but nonetheless. And when you close it as well, you might have to over push on it slightly. You're probably not going to notice this, um, but that possibility exists. Um, if you're installing it in the header, single door or a double door, be mindful of the construction of the door. You might want to kick this body over far enough so that you avoid mortising this portion of it into the style of the door. Okay, you might want to move it over well enough so that this all avoids the inch, inch and a half uh, width of the style so that you're not mortising into the end, grain of the end grain of the wood as well. Just be mindful of where you're going to install that and as it uh, affects or is affected by the composition and, and uh, uh, assembly process of the door itself. Um, now the mortise, I would measure, I would confirm the depth the width, the width, and then how um, wide you're going to make it in the door prep. When you're, measure, when you're mortising the body, you have to account for the thickness of the plate as well. And when they give you that inch and three quarter deep mortise, you'll notice that they're measuring it from here, not from the underside, because this is going to be mortised flush to the door. So I would take my inch and three quarter deep, two and a half inch wide, and then the 7 8 mortise thickness at the center line of where I want it to occur, split those dimensions in half, and then I would do my route with my plunge router. Plunge, plunge, and repeat that process till I've got a nice rectangle. 
radiused corners. I'd leave them radiused for now. I wouldn't square them out. And that might be why the prep dimensions are a little heavy so you can still fit this in without squaring out the corners. Then I'm going to measure the width, the length I should say, the width and the thickness of the plate and reset my router to do just that long rectangular plate and then do a dry fit. Square corners as necessary. Um, one thing we didn't talk about is the dimension at which you are going to install it in the frame in terms of the measuring it, let's say, from the pull side face of the jam. If you look in the lower left hand corner, the, the uh, 9 sixteenths of an inch dimension from the push face of the door to the center line of the roller latch is what you're going to observe. Uh, so you're going to transpose that dimension to your frame, but be sure to take an account, and this is where the caliper comes in, they're giving you from the face of the door to the vertical center line of the roller, not incorporating the thickness of the bumper, not incorporating the thickness of this of the, of the uh, stop that's on here, and that's where the caliper comes in, because you're going to need to say, well, okay, it's 9 sixteenths, but if I'm going to measure it from some other unknown point, such as the face of this for whatever reason, you know, you, you might want to do that. Um, you've got your body prep done, your plate prep done, you've squared your corners, you've dry fit, you're happy with it. Uh, if you have more than one to do, make any modifications to your uh, process of mortising and machining the door based on the success or less than perfect success of the initial. Make adjustments and continue on. And then at that point, you'll be an expert at mortising the uh, roller latch. Uh, you know, and, and all of them from Rockwood uh, are, gonna really, are going to certainly incorporate the body prep and then the plate prep. Two-step process. Um, and it's easy material, certainly once you get uh, started with doing it to uh, prep for. Overall length of the strike, two and a quarter, indeed. Overall width, inch and an eighth. <clears throat> bronze finish. This material is going to be made of solid brass, or at least the finished components are, with that oil rubbed finish. You're going to get screws, of course, for installing everything. The long ones are going to be for your roller latch. The shorter ones will be for your strike plate. The ability to adjust the tension on that roller is done quite simply. This has a dual spring scenario where you can increase or decrease that tension, but the second set of springs allow this, allows this entire assembly to compress as well. Um, when the door strike makes contact, it, contact with it, requiring it to compress and move in. Finally, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Rockwood products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website and a link to the full product catalog for their core product line, the original Rockwood product line of trim and auxiliary hardware like roller latches. And then their RM series catalog, their uh, custom door pull catalog. I would wholeheartedly suggest that you review the Rockwood roller latch, compare the quality of the fit and finish, and the cost before buying anyone else's roller latch. I think the confluence of quality, availability, and value exceed any other option. I would never use, not never, never is a long time, but I would likely not ever use a roller latch from everyone else because those Rockwood roller latches are the same quality and better than everyone else and are a lot less costly. That's the bottom line. Available in all of the finishes, available in all the core types that you need. Any questions on the Rockwood? This is their part number 593 in a 613 finish or any other Rockwood product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.